we are building a 23 story in a hotel uh, building for Imo State. Yeah, 23 story building. Well, um, this uh, uh, job uh, is contracted to Core Investment Core Services Limited. Uh, it was contracted for them to construct a 23-story uh, state-of-the-art uh, five-star hotel. And uh, the project is going to be completed within the lifespan of the administration. Uh, the understanding with the contractor is that this will be completed within a two-year, two-and-a-half-year period. And uh, that issue has been seriously conversed and discussed severally. And we understand that they are on schedule. Uh, Imo State is uh, up to par on the payment. We have committed to the bank and the uh, construction company by extension 50% of the cost of this uh, uh, edifice and we are hoping that uh, it will be completed within the stipulated time for completion. I don't have the project. It's not a PP uh, uh, private public partnership. This is a direct state government project. Yes. And they are yeah, they are contractors. When they finish they hand over the hotel to the state. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Sir. Um, actually, my name is Lawal Ahmed. I represent the NTA. Yes, um, actually, I have a lot of worry when I see government venturing into businesses. I've seen several of your projects being businesses, hotels. Now we've seen uh, an oil, palm oil processing plant, and so on. My worry is because the governor said at one time when he was addressing us that the money you made out of that oil processing plant has now been plowed back to phantom projects in the state. Now, a businessman, a businessman would have expanded that project, would have taken care of the other industry that is close to it, that is meant for processing of the finished product from that, that uh, processing plant. Now, my worry is, at the end of the day, what are you trying to achieve? First, the situation with the Imo Palm Plantation. Your thinking is that the private sector business person would have taken the money realized from the uh, concession and plowed it back into the business for expansion and growth purposes. Government has achieved that. The concession has been made. And part of the understanding is that the Imo Palm Plantation will be grown. And what you witness there today is growth. It is up and running new mills are being constructed that you witnessed new fertilizer plant attached to the mill is being constructed if the government has kept this business this expansion will not happen if you put it into private hands sell it completely what the government is getting out of it today the government will not we've merely given it out for a period of time and it is providing employment for our people it is paying them wages very importantly and we happen to have realized money to assist us in doing other projects and we have saved ourselves the time the palms there who hit menopause i told you in the next two years in the next two years we'll be replanting more than 40 hectares of our palm land. now that problem has been taken off the hand of the government that does not have the capacity to run business what we have done is engineer the situation and it's running and for here 
we are building a hotel we are building a monumental hotel that will outlast this administration that we are building a hotel does not mean that we are going to manage a hotel when we create this new near wonder of the world hotel we'll give it out to proper managers who have the capacity and capability to manage hotels that's what we will do the private sector can only drive so far we drive it the far we need rapid development in emo states and that is inclusive of building such monumental structures we cannot abdicate that role to anybody but we will build I assure you, it will be turned over to proper managers. This administration, the Concord Hotel that reference has been made to, has been also concessioned out. Fees have exchanged hands. The, the, the concessionaire will take over constructive receipt of the hotel by 1st of February. And uh, we are doing well. Thank you. The new facilities are working very well. The new facilities are working very fine. So we have taken up the RP light and the system is in good condition. There was no light before. There was no light before. It was under construction. No, that it was not uh, up to now. We are not landing at night. It's a 12 hour service. We are not uh, night landed as far as airfield like and uh, We renovated our control tower desk uh -huh, and brought some other facilities, the VHS. The VHS and uh, the rotating beacon. So uh, now we cover a long distance in uh, total VHS coverage. That is the nautical miles we cover before is higher now than before. The total airspace is now covered by the new VHF system. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 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 Okay, the federal government. Uh, okay, my name is Young Inkweko. Young. Inkweko. You are young. I'm young. Always young. <laughs> so I'm the airport manager from Mbakwe International Cargo Airport. Okay, what is going on here is that uh, the federal government is renovating, remodeling the airport. And this was not how the airport was looking in the past. You can see yourself that things are going fine well because the airport in the past was not like this. What it was was not like an airport of a nation. But what we have in place now, like you can see, is the fitting of a nation. We can go around. The halls are so large, unlike before, for the departure and the ticketing and checking halls. They are all meeting the national and international standards. Of course, we have to do that. It is for the tallest 
or the restroom. Um, okay. Yes, sir. It's almost completed. What we have left here now are the toilets, which we need to complete the tiling, and then the whole thing will be true. Sir. Yes, sir. The air conditioning is not part of the construction. Yes, sir. There is no radar system in this place. I believe the one that is in the region in Portacot covers this place. Nigeria and we didn't see it. So there is total radar coverage, but it's not in every airport because there are um, the locations are such that one location can control several uh, other airports. So we have 100% coverage of our airspace. We also now have total weather report. Before any plane will take off, you have the entire uh, uh, mileage of where you are going covered by the weather report system, both on the plane and on, on ground. You can communicate and know what is happening before you take off. This development took place in the last two years. Well, let's, uh, let's have the ticketing hall. Yes, let's go there. Lead us there. All right. We'll ask you. Yeah. All right. Okay. This other vegetation. That is the ticketing hall. This is the ticketing hall. And for now, we are combining it at ticketing and the parking hall. The parking hall is ready. Sooner or later, all locations on the parking will be taking place from that place where we are coming from. You don't need to go outside this place to assess your flight. And once you check in here, you go through this place, get into the departure hall, and take your flight. If you have visitors, see you are from here, you let you at that door and get back. Whatever happens in that place is no longer their business because we are strictly and very serious with the security of the airport and the nation at large. Yes, so, um, when are you leaving the site? Uh, we hope to leave the site by next week. Next week? Yes, sir. I said, we hope to leave the site by next week. Yes, completed, yes. It's mesh project in Abuja. Yeah. Yes, sir. This is the deputy governor. Vice governor. Vice governor. Uh, any questions? Because it's a straightforward thing. This airport is one of the 11 uh, With passengers, you say so. The passengers want to talk. Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, thank you. 
Well, we are here to look at the work going on in this airport as part of the National Good Governance Tour. And uh, so what are your impressions? You are the ones that use the airport. I've been going through here very regularly. And um, I'll tell you that there's quite a lot of improvement. We are, more, we are more comfortable now and we are happy with the government. So we encourage you to get on with the good works. It is, uh, it's really encouraging. So we are happy that you also uh, taking note of our own comfort. We, who brought you to where you are. And we encourage you and say, may God bless you and continue to bless you. Um, the same thing applies to what he had just said. Uh, we are so much impressed and encouraged from what we are seeing here. What, what we have seen here. So much improvement and uh, an improvement in the aviation industry, which I am supporting my colleague who has just spoken. Uh, thank you so much for all we have just noticed. And more kudos to your boss. Okay, what, what's your name? I'm um, Joseph Omukamuche. I'm from Abia State. I'm, I'm Dr. Francis Chikodnake from Imo State. Okay, thank you very much indeed for a great. Yeah. Um, hello, madam. You are traveling through the airport. We are here to see the work that the uh, government is doing here. How do you feel? When I, when I entered here, I saw a new chain. Like uh, last time I came here, it wasn't like this. But what I saw today gives me a joy, you know. If I'm going now, I will be proud to say that Imo Airport is having uh, another shape than what it was before. So I'm so happy and so proud to see something happening like this in uh, Imo State. I'm so happy. And then when I saw a lot of people, you know, rushing up and down, I now see that they send somebody to come and view what is going on here. I'm so happy to see it. My name is uh, Reverend Mrs. Sosuji. Uh, my husband is the one here, he's the king of Imo State. So I'm so happy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Royal Highness, we are leading the National Good Governance Tour team to monitor the projects of government all over the country. And we are here to see the work that the federal government through the Minister of Aviation is doing at the Imo Airport. You may want to speak to us. I'm Minister of Information. Well, my name is uh, Israel Highness, as a Dr. Josiah Osuji. I've uh, been using this airport. In the past, it wasn't so. But right now, I can see great improvement. And I can see that people will move from place to place here carefully and coolly without problem. Uh, that's remarkable improvement. And I, 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 I want to thank you, the minister, and everybody that are coming here for the great job that has been done. I've also visited almost all the airports from Portacourt and down here. They look similar. I don't see that uh, there's great improvement. And there's investment, which is what uh, the democratic move of women. Thank you very much, sir. You are very grateful. Okay. David, you have Maybe he doesn't have anything to say. <laughs> okay, madam. Yeah, we'll move. Thank you very much. Okay. This is part of the nationwide airport modernization program of President Goodluck Jonathan, which is being carried out dutifully, dexterously, by the Honorable Minister of Aviation, Princess Stella Odua. Um, if you look at what is happening here, it is happening in several other airports across the country, about 11 in the first phase of the airports. What the federal government is doing is to ensure that our airports begin to look like the other airports we see around the world. Before now, our airports were not looking like airports. And passenger comfort was never taken into account. We just put some little huts and call them airports. Now we are talking about ensuring that our airports are modernized because airports are the face of the country when people come into the country. And we are doing this all over the country. 
11 of them are, are now virtually being completed. Yesterday, you saw the commission in Abuja on television. Now, the major one in Abuja will be commissioned within the week, and virtually all the airports, are, the first phase, are ready for commissioning. In addition to this, there are cargo airports that are being constructed, new airports altogether in different parts of the country. And uh, the aviation program is very, very comprehensive. It's also aimed at ensuring that all the major airports develop some facilities around them that will make them cities of their own. And this will create jobs. Um, we expect that in the near future also part of the facilities will include airports close to this place and other facilities where people who come into town and don't want to go other can stay there and do their businesses. So it's a comprehensive program that the president is embarked upon and we are urging Nigerians to see these facilities and also for the media begin to discuss them with the public. We are ready with the post phase. You will show here that by next week contractors will be leaving this place. This is a different airport from what you used to know like the airport manager had explained. So this is why we have come to show you this job that is going on all over Nigeria, part of the transformation program of Mr. President. Air travelers now have different facilities altogether. In addition to this construction, you saw that the tower has been completely um, refurbished with additional facilities. Your renovation will be like you painted it and uh, no. New safety equipment have been installed here. And uh, like he said, now they can communicate Port Harcourt and Enugu and several other places from here. So if a pilot is going there and he has any problem, they can reach him from here. Total VHF coverage is now provided. And like I told you, we have 100% radar coverage of Nigerian airspace now. So the, the, the safety is far more better than it was at any time uh, in our history. In addition to that, the ministry also has a program of uh, supporting airlines uh, with capacity to raise funds that will enable them change aircraft or maintain existing ones. So it's a very comprehensive program. Aviation in Nigeria will never be the same again from what the president is doing. It's a major program of the federal government to make sure that aviation, which is the hub of business, which enables uh, people to travel very fast to wherever they want to do their businesses and return home in quick time. Today, President Goodluck Jonathan is giving this nation a different aviation industry altogether. And we must also commend the Minister of Aviation. She has done so much for this country in a very short time. You know, this kind of program has never been attempted in this country. Now we are seeing it. Now when you link this up with the railway modernization that is going on, because, Mr. President, at the same time that we are changing the face of aviation, we are changing the face of our railways that broke down completely in the last 20 years. Now, the trains are moving again. They have started moving from Lagos through Ibadan, Elorin, all round to Kano State. Now, we are beginning to see the restoration of the rail line from Port Harcourt through the southeast, through the north central, up to Meduguri. By the end of this year, the rail lines will be restored as they were before they were destroyed uh, by poor management, corruption, and lack of vision of the past. The president is restoring the railways completely. Yesterday we were at Ogota, Ogota, Ogota River Airport. Now, by March it will be delivered. By March, Baro Airport in uh, Niger State will be delivered. That of Onicha has already been delivered. That of um, Lokoja we will see when we go to Kogi State. So at the same time, the president is approaching transportation from very from four angles. Inner river transportation to make sure that the vessels carry goods and persons across our waterways to bring down the cost of transportation and start new businesses around our river ports and towns. Then the other one is the aviation, which I've just explained. The railways are on, and we are now giving more money for road delivery. So what the president is doing is very comprehensive. No government has attempted what we are doing in transportation. Roads, rails, river transportation, aviation. Everything is being tackled under the present transformation program because they have an impact on the economy, a complete impact on the economy. So what we want is a modern transportation system that takes advantage of all the transport sectors. So uh, if you have questions, you ask. Uh, we also just saw the power plant. You saw the power plant. That's another major program. This year, by the grace of God, Nigerians will see 
greater improvement in power than we saw last year. You saw that Geometric was ready for commissioning. You saw that Alaoji in Aba is ready for commissioning 504 megawatts of electricity. By next year, 600 megawatts will be completed when the steam turbines are installed at Alaoji. So it will give you 100, 100, uh, 1,074 megawatts of electricity from Alaoji alone. In addition to geometry, we saw 338 megawatts at uh, Egbema power, power plant today, virtually ready. So please, as we say, this government is out to change the way Nigeria has worked in the past. Many citizens don't yet understand it because of so many negative policies, but people don't really know what this president is doing. And I continue to vote on my honor and integrity that this president, by the grace of God, is quietly working on Nigeria. No person who brings change will be loved in the beginning. But let Nigerians know that contrary to all the noise of politics that goes on, this president is really moving this nation forward, and Nigeria will never be the same after President Goodluck Jonathan in the power sector, in aviation sector, in transport sector, in agriculture, in all the other areas. We have seen the kind of work that is going on. Now, in Imo State, we have also seen the job being done by the state government. As we go to the town hall, we will give you a summary of the things we have seen. Now that we have asked all the questions, let us move to the town hall meeting.